Hi everyone, welcome to another video of NS Pharma. Today we will see important multiple choice questions from Pharmacology, chapter Diuretics and Antidiuretics. From the chapter Diuretics and Antidiuretics. So this chapter is uh, somewhat very important. So many pharmacist competitive exam in the exam you can see the questions from this chapter especially the mechanism of action of different drugs and the adverse effects of the drugs so we will move to the first question of this video before that if you are watching this youtube channel first of all then please subscribe the channel this channel and also press the bell button so that you will get the notification whenever I upload new videos we will move to the first question question number one furosemide furosemide acts by inhibiting the following in the renal tubular cell furosemide acts by inhibit the following in the renal tubular cell what is the mechanism of furosemide Option A sodium potassium chloride co-transporter Option B sodium chloride symporter Option C sodium hydrogen antiporter Option D sodium potassium ATPase What is the correct answer for the mechanism of action of furosemide? That is it acts by inhibiting which of the transporter? The correct answer is option A furosemide acts through inhibiting sodium potassium chloride co-transporter now we will move to the next question, question number 2, thiazide diuretics and furosemide. Thiazide diuretic and furosemide have directionally opposite effect on the net renal excretion of the following substance. These are the different classes of uh, diuretics. This is a classification we will see in the last after uh, once the MCQ is over. In this video itself, in the last, we will study some uh, important points. In that, we will see the classification of diuretics. This classification is also important. So, in this question, what is the difference between frosimide and thi thiazide diuretics? Main one of the important of the excretion of which the following item option a uric acid option b calcium option c magnesium option d bicarbonate the correct answer for this question is option b calcium thiazide diuretic and furosemide have directly opposite effect that is one will increase the calcium in your excretion one will decrease the calcium excretion so we will see which one will increase and which one will decrease the excretion of calcium furosemide increases calcium excretion furosemide increases calcium excretion while thiazide diuretics will decrease calcium excretion you had not this one prusimide and thiazide diuretics are they are diuretics even though prusimide will increase the calcium excretion while thiazide diuretic have opposite that is neg uh, decreases the calcium excretion now we'll move to the third question of the video Though ethacrylic acid, ethacrylic acid is a also a high ceiling diuretics like furosemide, it is practically not used. It is not used because ethacrylic acid is ethacrylic acid is not used because option A it is more autotoxic, option B it causes diarrhea and gut bleeding, option C its response increases steeply over a narrow dose range option d all of the above the correct answer for this question is option d all of the above ethacrylic acid is not used nowadays why because it is more autotoxic it causes diarrhea and gut bleeding and also its response its response increases steeply over a narrow dose range all are the correct so correct answer for this question is option d all of the above now we will move to the fourth question of the video the sodium chloride symbol in the early distal convoluted tubule of the kidney is inhibited by the sodium chloride symbol is inhibited is in the early distal convoluted tubule in early distal convoluted tubule of the kidney is inhibited by option A thiazide diuretics, option B 
metalazone, option C, cipamide, option D, all of the above. The correct answer for this question is all of the above. Thiazide, metalazone, cipamide, all will cause inhibition of sodium chloride symbiote. Next question, question number five. The primary site of action of thiazide diuretic. The primary site of action of thiazide diuretic is option A proximal convoluted tubule, proximal tubule, option B ascending limb of loop of Henle, option C cortical diluting segment, option D collecting duct. The primary site of action of thiazide diuretics. The correct answer is option C. It will act at cortical diluting segment. Question number six. Long-term thiazide therapy. Long-term thiazide therapy can cause hyperglycemia by. It will cause hyperglycemia. This is the uh, complication of high ceiling and uh, thiazide diuretics. The long term use of thiazide diuretic will cause hyperglycemia by option A reducing insulin release, option B interfering with glucose utilization in tissues, option C increasing sympathetic activity, option D increasing corticosteroid secretion. The correct answer is option A it will decrease, it will reduce insulin release. Long term thiazide therapy will cause hyperglycemia by reducing insulin release. Question number seven, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, that is NSID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs reduces the diuretic action of frosimide by option A, preventing prostaglandin mediated intrarenal hemodynamic action, option B, blocking the action in the ascending limb of loop of Henle. Option C, enhancing salt and water reabsorption in the distal tubule. Option D, increasing aldosterone secretion. NSID reduces the diuretic action of frosimide by preventing the prostaglandin mediated intrarenal hemodynamic action. NSID preventing the pre prostaglandin. So it will reduce the diuretic actions of frosimide. Now we will move to the next question, question number eight. Spironolactone, spironolactone can be usefully combined with the following diuretic except Spironolactone can be usefully combined with the following diuretics except options are frosimide, amyloride, hydrochlorothiazide and chlorthalidone. The correct answer for this question is option B amyloride. Why? Because spironolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic and amyloride is also a potassium sparing diuretic. If we are combining these two each other, it will cause hyperkalemia, severe hyperkalemia. So that's why spironolactone cannot be combined with amyloride. That can be combined with frosimide, hydrochlorothiazide or chlorthalidone, no issue, but cannot be combined with amyloride because of the severe hypo hyperkalemia. Prosimide hydrochloride thiazide will cause hypokalemia. That's why spironolactone can combine. Next question, question number nine. The current therapeutic indication of acetazolamide. Acetazolamide. The current therapeutic indication of acetazolamide. We know that acetazolamide is coming under Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. This one we already studied when we are uh, in the video of uh, glaucoma. We studied this medicine, acetazolamide. So in this option, option A, congestive heart failure. Option B, renal insufficiency. Option C, cirrhosis of the liver. And the last option, glaucoma. The correct answer for this question is glaucoma. Now we will move to the... 10th question of this video, select the diuretic that can cause gynecomastia, hirsutism and menstrual disturbance 
as a side effect on long term use select the diuretic that can cause gynecomastia hirsutism and menstrual disturbance as side effect on long term use options are amiloride spironolactone metolazone option d acetazolamide the correct answer for this question is spironolactone this is one of the important question it will ask for the gynecomastia the medicine which causes the gynecomastia on long term use in the option there will be spironolactone so you have to opt for the spironolactone next question question number 11 which of the following is a potassium retaining diuretic potassium retaining that is potassium sparing diuretic options are triamterine trimethoprim tizanidine trimetazidine the correct answer for this question is triamterine triamterine amiloride spironolactone are all are coming under potassium retaining diuretics this classification we will see in the last of this video after once the mcq is over now we will move to the next question question number 12 before that if you are watching this video first of all you just subscribe my channel and also press the bell button so that you will get the notification whenever i upload new videos so don't forget to subscribe and don't hesitate to subscribe subscribe also question number 12 triamterine differs from the spironolactone in that triamterine differs from the spironolactone in that option a it has greater natriuretic action it has greater natriuretic action option b its potassium retaining action is not dependent on presence of aldosterone option c it acts from the luminal membrane membrane side of the distal tubular cell option d both b and c are correct that means both b and c is correct that means its potassium retaining action is not dependent on the presence of aldosterone and it acts from the luminal membrane side of the distal tubular cells the correct answer for this question option d both b and c are correct now we are moving to the next question question number 13 the primary mechanism by which anti diuretic hormone that is adh reduce urine volume is the primary mechanism by which anti diuretic hormone reduce urine volume is option a decrease in glomerular filtration rate option b decrease the renal blood flow option c decrease the water permeability of the descending limb of loop of henle option d increase the water permeability of collecting duct cell the correct answer for this question adh will primarily mechanism the primary mechanism of adh for reduces for reducing urine volume is option d it increases the water permeability it increases water permeability of the collecting duct cell now we will move to the last question of the video indication of the desmopressin it is also an anti diuretic medicine desmopressin indication of desmopressin include the following except options are neurogenic diabetics insipidus nephrogenic diabetes insipidus option c bed wetting in children option d bleeding due to hemophilia the correct answer for this question is desmopressin indication except it is not desmopressin is not used in case of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus nephrogenic diabetes insipidus while desmopressin can be indicated for the neurogenic diabetes insipidus bed wetting in children bleeding due to hemophilia So guys these are the multiple choice question from the this chapter these are very important now we will move to the classification of diuretics classification of diuretics diuretics are classified into mainly three types one is high efficacy diuretics one is high efficacy diuretic the second one is medium efficacy diuretic then third one is weak or adjunctive diuretics these are the weak or adjunctive these are the three class of diuretics one is high efficacy it's also the mechanism of high ceiling high efficacy diuretic is inhibition of inhibition of sodium potassium chloride co-transport 
co-transport. This is the mechanism of high efficacy diuretic or high ceiling diuretic inhibition of sodium potassium chloride co-transport while in case of medium efficacy in diuretics is the inhibitors they are the inhibitors of sodium chloride symbot symbot sodium chloride symbot now the example for this one high ceiling diuretic are fruzimide is one of the good example furosemide or fruzimide or bumetanide 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 then torsemide these are the different class different drugs coming under this category high ceiling diuretic or high efficacy diuretics now the next one uh, it's also called it's sulfamoyl derivative sulfamoyl sulfamoyl derivatives they are sulfamoyl derivatives now the second one medium efficacy diuretics they are inhibitors of sodium chloride symbot they are classified into two types one is benzothiazine benzothiazine that means thiaz thiazide they are also called thiazides the other one is thiazide like thiazide like thiazide like the example for thiazide is hydrochlorothiazide hdz hydrochloro hctz hydrochloro thiazide benz thiazide and then clopamide are example for thiazide diuretic thiazide like diuretic examples are metolazone metolazone this was one of the question was the metolazone then sipamide are all coming under this classification this category thiazide like so these both thiazide and thiazide like diuretics are acting through sodium chloride symbot inhibition now the last class weak or adjunctive diuretics one is carbonic anhydrase inhibitors carbonic anhydrase inhibitor example is acetazolamide which is used for glaucoma treatment that we will already covered the next one the second option potassium sparing potassium sparing diuretic this is very important in this it's one class is aldosterone antagonist that is aldosterone antagonist aldosterone antagonist example is spironolactone spironolactone which will cause spironolactone which will cause uh, what is this uh, uh, in long term use which will cause uh, uh, gynecomastia on long term use the next one is hirsutism and the second option then uh, inhibitors of renal epithelial sodium channel examples are triamterin amyloride then the third class third class osmotic diuretic osmotic diuretic this is also normally coming in for the exam which of the following is classified as osmotic diuretic examples are manitol manitol isosorbide all are coming under this class so in this potassium sparing there is two class aldosterone and agonist example is pyranolactone another one is inhibitor of renal epithelial sodium channel inhibitor of sodium channel example is triamterin and amyloride so these both are that is aldosterone antagonist and inhibitors of sodium channel and the renal epithelium all are potassium sparing diuretic so this is very important you have to study this one very well in the classification and these are just some multiple choice questions only so try to study this all thing and uh, if you like this video please uh, thumbs up and also share with your pharmacy friends thank you